the University of Minnesota has been banned from contributing to the Linux kernel for knowingly submitting code with security flaws. And for some reason, this has started a really big controversy that has divided people in the Linux community. And I've tried to look at both sides of this to sort of get a balanced perspective. So the University of Minnesota's justification for doing this is basically security research. They wanted to see if they could compromise or at least test the integrity of an open source project. And the Linux kernel is probably one of the biggest and most important open source projects uh, that are out there. So the approach was to introduce bugs and security flaws into the Linux kernel by doing what's called hypocrite commits, which is really just a stealthy way to compromise a project because what you're basically doing with the hypocrite commit is you're introducing code that fixes a minor flaw in the project. Maybe it's a bug that might not have become a security issue or anything like that. But at the same time that you fix that bug, you set up an actual vulnerability that could lead to remote code execution, uh, privilege escalation, data exfiltration, any kinds of nasty stuff. Uh, it's sort of similar to what we saw with the PHP interpreter hack, which luckily didn't actually get merged into the main branch. Uh, but remember, these were commits that claimed to fix a typo, when in reality, they introduced a backdoor for remote code execution if you knew the secret password zero diem. Um, except some of these bugs uh, for the Linux kernel allegedly got merged into the actual mainline kernel and maintainers basically had to go back and scrutinize not just those commits, but now the kernel maintainers are looking over all of the commits from anybody that has a umn.edu email address, basically anyone from the university. Uh, and they're also banning anyone with that domain as well, which is effectively banning the entire university. Um, now, I'm all for information security and penetration testing, which is basically when a corporation or some other kind of entity hires you to try and hack them so that you can essentially show them their vulnerabilities before an actual black hat goes and compromises your business in some way. But as far as I can tell, the University of Minnesota didn't meet the base level guidelines for doing a penetration test which is first, you have to get permission to do so. You can't just go into your local office building and brute force their Wi-Fi password and then start scanning the ports of all the systems that are connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, you first have to meet up with the management of that company, get a scope for what you are allowed to test or what they want you to test, and then you go and do the testing within that scope. Now, the Linux kernel being an open source project, I guess it is a little bit different than, you know, a company hiring penetration testers. Um, you know, anybody can obviously submit a patch to the Linux kernel and whether or not that patch gets included is just at the discretion of the maintainers. But I'm sure that there are certain people the maintainers trust more than others. You know, if some random person like you or me submitted a patch to a Linux kernel, it would probably go under a lot more scrutiny than code that's coming from a university that has been submitting patches to the kernel for years. Uh, it's kind of like if I were to pen test Google by first becoming an employee and then working my ass off, putting in overtime, hours on the weekend, all of that good stuff um, to try and move my way up the corporate ladder, right? Like I'm going to go from being an entry level employee to a manager and then in 10 years, maybe I become the CTO of Google. And then I leverage that access that I have as the CTO to hack Google services. And then I say, aha, you fell for my trick, Google. My 10 years of work here was really just an elaborate scheme to test the security of your company and you failed. Doing something like that, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense from a, I guess, security researcher perspective. Um, now, even though the approach of these security researchers isn't that good, I don't get why they are receiving the kind of hate that they are. So 
the university, they pretty much know that they screwed up. Uh, that's why they have suspended that particular line of research and they're looking over their methods to, I guess, come up with a better way to do security research like this in the future. But I don't think that the people who submitted these hypocrite commits were doing so in bad faith. I don't think that they wanted to try and destroy the Linux kernel or bring harm to anyone that was using it. Um, in fact, according to the uh, research paper that was done uh, about this experiment, and I'm going to leave a link to this uh, in the description, um, but apparently there was some sort of like security and safety measures that they underwent um, by doing this for submitting the patches. So basically what they would do is submit a malicious patch, uh, a hypocrite commit, and they would wait until they got an email from a kernel maintainer saying that the patch looked good, it's ready to be merged into the main line. And then they would respond back to that email saying, well, actually, you might not want to merge that patch because it, it's got some funny stuff going on with it, you know, like, uh, yeah, it fixes this typo or it fixes this little small bug, but at the same time, it introduces some malware. So what you might want to do instead is submit this patch and then they would uh, give them a legitimate patch um, to, to put in. So, you know, that's why I'm not entirely sure whether anything actually got merged into the kernel. I've seen some sources say that they didn't, but again, like I said in this research paper, they took security measures to try and prevent that from happening. Also, I think that there's a little bit of good that may have come out of this. There, there might be a silver lining uh, to the security researchers doing what they did and doing it the way that they did um, which is that hopefully this has shed some light on a potential flaw in how commits are accepted to the Linux kernel. Because according to the research paper um, that the University of Minnesota published regarding this, the accounts that were used to submit the malicious buggy code were mostly just random Gmail accounts. Uh, there was one patch introduced from a umn.edu account, which apparently didn't even do anything. Um, and then I guess that's what kind of started this whole reaction of banning the entire um, university. Uh, so if all of that is true, that the patches were submitted from random Gmail accounts and then they got approved by maintainers, they might wanna step up the scrutiny of patches that are submitted across the board. Because what is stopping a company or a government entity that might actually want to compromise the kernel from doing so. Uh, I'm sure that there are, for example, employees of Microsoft that have achieved a privileged or trusted status with the kernel developers, considering all the work that Microsoft has been doing over the past few years with Linux. And Microsoft has a track record of doing the three E's to projects. In fact, they might have been the ones to invent the three E's strategy, which is embrace, extend, and extinguish. So if Microsoft could somehow legally get away with doing hypocrite commits to the Linux kernel and then compromising it that way, I really wouldn't pass, uh, put it past them doing so. So all in all, I think that what the researchers did was definitely unethical, okay? It definitely, it, it's, it's not ethical hacking, all right? Because they didn't get permission. They should have um, gotten that permission from at least one of the kernel maintainers. It's not like they have to you know, inform every single person, just one of those senior maintainers. Uh, and then they could have done a more proper ethical penetration test. And that is the main thing that the kernel developers are upset about, is just not being informed of what was going on, which is totally valid. But I think banning the entire university from submitting patches is a bit of an overreaction. But that's just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments below.